This is Korea. Well, after World War II, we had occupying armies all over the world because we fought in Europe and in the Pacific Theater in Asia. And it was the emergence of communist China in 1949 comes about to where we have a Cold War standoff uh, in the Pacific Theater. The communist Chinese supported in word the North Koreans into invading South Korea. And with that, the United Nations came together and resolved to defend South Korea from North Korean aggression. Later on in the war, uh, the Communist Chinese actually began supporting not only in word but now in deed. In February of 1951, the Battle of Chipyongni. It's basically been a southward retreat to the bottom of the peninsula because of the onslaught of the North Korean army. And then with the inclusion of the Communist Chinese army, uh, the Americans now are trying to push back on an offensive. And it is at Chipyongni that we actually are able to hand a defeat for the first time against the Communist Chinese during the Korean War. So you have five infantry battalions and an artillery battalion there in support in this one mile by one and a half mile perimeter in the Korean Peninsula. But it was an onslaught of Communist Chinese coming in and attacking simultaneously around the entire perimeter. Unfortunately, because of the cold and the inability to operate medical evacuation via helicopter, um, there was some concern for how to treat casualties. The medic is thinking, how are we going to treat the patient? We have limited supplies. If we do become surrounded, the planning factor was we need to come up with a different way to uh, treat the patient. Resupply is having to be airdropped. Nothing is moving out of the perimeter. The patients are continually getting consolidated into the clearing station, and that's not mentioning the ones that are being returned to duty at the battalion aid station level. The expectation was that they would immediately begin evacuating patients, but because of the tactical situation, they were unable to evacuate the patients. What you basically have is defend in place, keep the land, keep the territory that you have made a perimeter and hold on to your patient. Uh, physicians have written after the war saying that they knew they would have to kind of think um, outside the box. What they were having to do was come up with different ways to use bedpans, come up with different ways to have a urinal for the soldiers because they're packed in. The medics determined that the patients that they were holding uh, did not have the proper diet and the means to receive nutrition after being wounded. The regular chow, the cooks would provide for the soldiers. For a wounded soldier, that was not adequate. So they actually found a cow and they butchered the cow and made a soup or a stew with the cow to enable the soldiers to have some kind of nourishment that wasn't solid foods, but they were able to take because of their wounds, not able to take a normal diet. It's an example of what we potentially will face in the future, and that is a near-peer opponent where we do not necessarily have air superiority. And of course, you're limited by acts of God, such as the weather and low ceilings, so at Chip Yang Ni, they faced that, and they predicted that they would face that based on the tactical situation. So I think that's the important piece of when we talk about the best medic, whether it's a surgeon or whether it's a medic, that tactical craft is important. And that's why we want to emphasize field care in the combat zone. Tactical combat casualty care can't help anybody if you're dead. So being able to take care of a patient in a situation where evacuation is not going to come, thinking outside the box, and applying those skills that you learn in the field craft of military medicine is what will make a difference in the lives of a soldier.